200 Earth impact craters mapped by size and age. We'll show many examples from each size class, with some emphasis on describing the landform morphometry. Starting with impact database craters less than one kilometer. The absolute smallest are these two, with diameters in the order of just 10 meters. This one in Peru is super recent, formed by a meteor impact in 2007. Relatively tiny craters like this are short-lived features on the Earth's active surface. A similarly sized crater in the U.S. state of Kansas has been essentially erased by agricultural activity. According to early investigations, there was still an observable crater here in the 19th century. Pretty localized impact so far. Stepping up in order of magnitude, there's Kali Crater on the largest island of Estonia. The crater is an attractive pond in a lovely patch of forest. IRAS scanning shows a suite of craters as the meteorite fragmented on entry. Even at this relatively small size, we're getting into significantly greater destruction, with this impact being tied to island-wide ecological destruction, a Baltic-wide tsunami, and violent shock effects as far away as Sweden. Within the North American Rocky Mountains, U.S. state of Wyoming is an anomalously old crater for its size. This older impact caused shock lithofaction below the crater site, forming a more erosion-resistant rock type, subsequently buried in sediment. Despite later erosion of the initial landform, exposure of the underlying formation still reveals a preserved crater form in the sedimentary record as an elevated rim due to differential erosion. Some of the larger craters of this size class are impressive and distinctive landforms, especially well-preserved or present in arid world regions. the largest being the spectacular Wolf Creek Crater of Northern Australia. For our next size class, up to 10 kilometer diameters, known craters are more numerous and overall older as these larger impact features have greater preservation potential. Near the bottom of this size range, at about one kilometer diameter, is the famous and well-studied Behringer Crater, also called Meteor Crater in the US state of Arizona. This was an impact into a thick sequence of flat-lying sedimentary rock layers. The incredible energy of the impact hinged up some of these rock layers, and even flipped some right over, putting them in reverse stratigraphic order, in addition to depositing significant overturned debris around the crater. Rocks below the impact site were converted into breccia, a totally different type of rock. As the crater rim subsequently eroded, much of the debris and other sediments accumulated within the crater basin. Currently, Total rim height lost to erosion is estimated to be about 20 meters. Daniel Berenger was one of the first people to suggest that this remarkable feature, which had an earlier name of Coon Mountain, was produced by a meteor impact. It took decades for this to be broadly accepted. It was previously thought to be of volcanic origin because no main body of the meteor was to be found. High energy physics, not widely understood at the time, indicates that the meteorite would have mostly vaporized on impact. A nice example of a crater two to three kilometers wide is Rotterdam in southern Africa. I should mention that we're easily into city killer impacts here, in case you're wondering. A relatively young crater in a three to four kilometer range makes this very circular lake in northern Quebec, Canada. Moving over to Saskatchewan, Canada, and jumping up to five kilometers diameter, we have Gao Crater, another lake feature, but this one having a big central island. Up to this point, we've mostly been dealing with simple craters, but larger craters start to be increasingly of the complex type with the central peak associated with rebound uplift. Although this basin has been heavily eroded and sculpted by ice sheet erosion, the deep crater form persists. At about six kilometers diameter, we have this impressive feature in central Algeria. This kind of multi-ring form can occur from a concentric circular pattern of post-impact rock faulting. Back to Australia for a seven kilometer example, oldest one shown so far. Still a clear circular feature visible on the landscape despite a huge amount of surface erosion. Current land surface estimated to be a full kilometer or two below the original crater floor. Back to Northern Quebec, Canada for an eight kilometer feature. Another crater lake, along with previously shown new Quebec crater, having a huge water volume, allowing it to remain ice and snow cover free, unlike the thousands of small glacial lakes in this broad region. Back to Australia again for a nine kilometer example. 
heavily eroded, but a circular signature of the impact is nicely preserved in the radial inward or centripetal surface drainage pattern. Our next size class is up to diameters of 50 kilometers. Lots more features and many older ones, with the mean age of this class being over 400 million years old. The range of impact magnitudes reviewed next can range from a continental scale disruption to a serious threat to civilization. Looking at the spatial distribution of craters, particularly the older ones shown in yellow to green, there may be some bias associated where there's been more detailed geologic mapping, but it also relates to old stable continental regions where features are going to be longer preserved. That can explain the greater prevalence in much of North America, Northern Europe, and in North and West Australia, and the absence of such features around the geologically active circumpacific ring and along the orogenic belt through Southern Europe and Asia. At about 10 kilometers diameter, there's the impressive rebounded warped stratigraphy of upheaval dome in Utah, which forms another interesting pattern of surface drainage. Here a textbook example of the annular drainage pattern. At about the same size, we have this one, which is our closest to the equator impact crater, an important landform of Ghana as the country's only natural lake. There are many interesting craters in the 20 to 30 kilometer diameter range, including this beauty in Australia, and one of the highest latitude craters known in Arctic Canada. This one's well studied due to the cold environment and lack of vegetation. It has large shatter cones preserved in the shocked bedrock, definitive evidence for confirming impact origins. And this one in Germany, with this picturesque town built within an inner ring. Getting up to 30 kilometers diameter, we have this island group in Northern Lake Superior, Canada. The islands represent remnants of central peak uplift, just high enough to be above current lake level. At 36 kilometers diameter, there's clear water west in Quebec, Canada, part of a one-two punch of a binary asteroid impact. And near the top end of this size class at 40 kilometers diameter, it's a seabed impact site off the Norway coast, hidden from view, but clearly visible in C4 imaging. Our next size class is up to diameters of 100 kilometers, approaching extinction level events. At the low end of this size class is this one, hidden in the mountains, not identified as an impact feature until satellite imagery had put its full extent into view. And at the high end of this class, at 85 kilometers diameter, is the Manicouan crater of Quebec. This crater ring is filled by a hydroelectric reservoir, which connected two earlier lakes that previously occupied east and west sides of the ring. Easily visible from space, and one of the most iconic impact features on Earth. There are three known impact features on Earth for which initial crater diameters exceeded 100 kilometers. First is Sudbury Basin, Ontario, Canada, exceeding 1.8 billion years in age the basin shape reflects extensive modification by episodes of mountain building and erosion. The heavily modified central basin now contains a series of younger fill layers. The impact melt experienced sufficient differentiation to concentrate metal-rich ores at the base, where there has been extensive nickel and copper mining. Next is the relatively more recent and well-known Chicxulub Crater. The crater center is offshore of the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico. On land, some surface evidence of this impact still exists, including a shallow circular trough and numerous sinkholes around that trough, marking the inner rim. An impact capable of creating a crater of this magnitude would have released energy equivalent to millions of nuclear weapons. This impact is widely associated with the KT extinction event, denoted globally by a sedimentary layer rich in iridium, an element that is extremely rare in Earth's crust, but common in comets and asteroids. And finally, there's the very ancient, very huge Verita Ford impact crater in South Africa, the largest verified impact structure on Earth. The initial crater, which has long since eroded away, has been estimated at 170 to 300 kilometers across when it formed. Following over 2 billion years of erosion, surface evidence of this massive impact still exists as a central uplift dome within deep basement rocks. To form a crater of this magnitude, the meteor may have been the size of New York City traveling at over 50,000 kilometers per hour, deeply puncturing the Earth's crust by tens of kilometers at the epicenter, with global extensive fallout. Our final map, Earth's impact craters from the Planetary and Space Science Center 
Earth Impact Database. See video text or methods and sources. And thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, or watch more Geography Viz.